<laughs> okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Good. Seems you are all enjoy your breakfast. Good. All right. Um, welcome to the lecture of the material science. Uh, today we are going to talk about um, Bohr atomic model. Uh, before we get started, as usual, let's have a quick recall about what we have learned on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, uh, we start to uh, understand the atomic model. Start from um, two centuries ago, um, John Dalton, he proposed a, a ma atomic model which is uh, spherical, uh, small and uh, invisible particle. So it, although the, the model is not exactly correct, but it gives us a, a way, a direction to think of the, the model of the, the model of the atomic or atoms. Okay. And then uh, in the very, in the beginning of the 20th century, um, JJ Thomason, he proposed a prime putting model for atoms. And we discussed this on Wednesday, this model is not correct, but um, you know, in order to know prime putting model, you need to know prime putting. You know, you need to understand what is Christmas putting. So uh, that means that you have prom or racing in the inside of the putting, and then we regard racing as an electron, and the whole body, the whole uh, atom itself is the uh, mass. So. Uh, we understand this is not correct, but the electron charged positive uh, negatively, and uh, the whole body of the atom charged positively. So, in order to prove this is correct or not, uh, the gold foil experiment was conducted, and we realized the property model is not correct, right? And property uh, gold foil experiment is done by a uh, Geiger Marston, we also call this Geiger Marston experiment or uh, supervised by Roosevelt. So we, all, we also call um, this uh, Roosevelt uh, supervised experiment. And I hope you all understand. Um, according to Marston analysis for the electron, he realized, we realized that in the center of the, um, in the center of the atom is a is a core and which has a massive, which has a very heavy mass in, in the core. And the surrounding is nothing. So we understand that the electron will be not in the center. And then according to the, the analysis, we realize the ratio of the nucleus per atom is about one out of 10,000, which is not correct, but it's very close. According to our current time, the, you will know the, the, ratio, the nucleus per atom is about 23,000 for, for uranium, and it's about 145,000 for hydrogen. Okay, so this is also called quaternary model. We also call this Roosevelt model. And then in order to prove this is right or not, we need to do some experiments. But there's a problem to before this experiment, there's uh, uh, many scientists against this model because if we have, if this is a planetary model, there's a kind of coll coll collapse from the electron will hit the nucleus because of the columbic attraction, positive and negative they will attract each other. So seems it won't, the atom won't stay stably. Okay. So that's why, the, that's why in the end of the uh, lecture on Wednesday, we talk about Bohr atomic model. And this is the model which is recognized by many scientists. And that's why, uh, and also experiment proof is correct. And then that's why Bohr got a Nobel Prize because of this model. Okay, and there are, very, there are four important postulates. Uh, but we call this four postulates for hydrogen atoms. So these six are very important in order, in order to uh, find an equation 
to describe the Bohr atomic model. And we already derived this, for, uh, already used these six postulates to, uh, to find out uh, the equations for this, uh, for the atomic model. And we use, first we use electron energy, which is electron, energy of electron is equal to the kinetic energy of electron and O plus the potential energy of the electron. So this is equation one. The equation two is that if electrons stay in the same place, same orbit, and that means the force need to be zero. So the force will be equal to dynamic force plus the columbic force. And this is according to the uh, postulates number three. And we have this for equation two. And then another postulate uh, leading lead this to us to find out another equation, which is that the angular momentum of electron is, is quantized. So this angular momentum of electron like this, and it's quantized, is is equal to the n, n is the digit integer number, right? Times this is Planck constant, and divided by two pi. So this is a uh, quantized because n is equal to one, two, three, four. So this is equation three. So as I hope you remember, in the end of lecture, we tell you that there are three equations and three unknowns which are the radius between the uh, electron and nucleus. Number two, the energy of the electron. Third, the velocity of the electron. So we have three equations. We want to find out these three parameters. So this is the first equation. We've, according to three equations, this is the first one we found, which is uh, radius. So I, I don't... We don't want to divide these three equations to get this answer for you, but I want you to know this is the answer. So the answer is that R equal to this. And uh, as you know, this is constant because epsilon, Planck constant, pi, the mass of the electron, and the charge of electrons. Okay, this is a constant. So R is proportion to n power 2 and reciprocal to the z. So if n is increasing, r is increasing. z increasing, r decreased. Okay, what is z? Atomic number, right? What is atomic number? Proton number. So if your proton number increase, your, your radius between the electron and the nucleus will be decreased. Okay? So, what I want you to remember is that the R, if we regard a certain atom, for example, like hydrogen, like helium or lithium, Z will be a constant. So actually R is a proportion of what? Is a R is a proportion, is a function of N only. N is what? One, two, three, four, five. So that's what what does this equation tell you? R is quantized. It can be one number, one certain number times one, times two, times three, times four. So R is quantized. So for the radius of the atom hydrogen, let's say that Z equal to one. So we only have one proton in the nucleus. And then let's assume something like this. This is nucleus, and of course this is one proton. And this is R, R here, here, okay? This is a electron. So if n equal to 1, that means R1 will become R, right? Let's put it here. How about n equal to 2? If n equal to 2, R will become 4R, right? Okay? If R equal to 3, what happened? R will become 9R. Sorry, R3 will become 9R. R2 will become 4R. Okay? No problem, right? This is easy. So let's say that if Z equal to one, which is hydrogen, and equal to one, which is in the in the first orbit. So if we put this into this equation, what can we get? This is called we, we call ground state. Electron is in the ground state of the orbital. 
So we can get this number, which is R1 is equal to what? 0 0.529 Armstrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember this number. This can be in Kahoo. This can be in your midterm exam. It's not difficult. You just remember 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.53. That will be enough. 0 0.53 Armstrong. That we call it Z A0 because this is quantized. The radius will be the ditch, this number times an integer number, like 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, sorry, it's not 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 1 power 2, 2 power 2, 3 power 2, 4 power 2. So it's quantized. So I want you to remember this, 0 0.53 Armstrongs. We call it A0. This is the basic number. So we also call this the ball radius because this is a very simple example and this is the simplest model to extend to a complicated autons, I mean complicated model. Okay, so this equation tell you that if z equal is z is larger than one, that means that you have many protons in the nucleus. It can be as I just told you, helium, lithium, boron, carbon, neutron, and nitrogen, anything. As long as, you only, as long as you only have one electron in the orbit, only one electron, okay? So, so we can write the equation like this, because this is A, right? We, we, write, uh, we make the R function of N become like this. A is a constant, and times n power 2 divided by z. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember this equation. This is not difficult at all. Am I right? Okay. Right. So, as you know that, if we increase the z, that means we increase the number of the proton in the nucleus. The r will what? I will reduce. So if we have two protons in the nucleus or three, the R1 will what? Will reduce. This electron will be more closer to will be closer to the nucleus. Right? So that means that electron will, will pull will be pulled in to this to close to close the nucleus. If I have more proton. It makes sense to you, right? Why? Because you have electron, which is negative charge. You have proton, which is positive charge. If you have more proton, that means the electron will be closer to the, the nucleus, right? Because you have more char positive charge. So this is, this is called columbic attraction, right? Positive and, neg neg positive and negative, of course, they attract each other, right? Okay? Right. So. As you know that the radius will be smaller. N3, you know this is larger, this is smaller. Of course, this is not on scale. Right, so this is the first equation. We, this is the first equation we find out the relationship between the radius and the, uh, this is called quantum number actually, the principal quantum number. Okay, this is N is an integer number. Okay, how about the second one? We want to know the energy of the system, or the energy of the electron. And as a result, this is the, the answer of the uh, energy here. So E equal to minus this one. This is constant again. And uh, times what? Times Z power 2 divided by N power 2. So as you know, this is negative. If you have more negative energy, that means what? That means the system is more, is more stable. Right? Because you have lowest energy. If you have a higher energy, you get it, you will be not stable. I just, I make example for you. If this if this room is very cold, I mean temperature is very low. You don't want to you don't want to move because you feel cold if you move. But if this the temperature at this room is very hot, like thirty five Celsius, everybody want to move, right? because you feel so hot. So you are very active. So that means what? You are unstable, okay? So this is what 
happen. So assume is the z uh, we just want to find we just use hydrogen as an example and energy will be the function of n and again is the integer number right what we call principal quantum number right so this is the constant so we can get the answer of this easily we use this as a k minus k so e will be equal to minus k times z power 2 divided by m power 2. That means your z increase, energy increase. If n increase, e decrease. Of course, regardless of the minus. If you put the minus in, that will be the, that will be vice, that will be the different, right? So again, because this is constant, we can easily to calculate. So k is this. k is equal to 2.18 times 10 to minus 18 joules per autumn, or 1.312 megajoules per mole. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember this very well. k is equal to 13.6 electron volt. Electron volt is the energy, is the, um, the unit of the energy. That means one electron times one volt. This is the unit of the energy. So the definition is that if you have a one electron and this electron travel the one volt differences in, in the space, whatever, and the energy this electron will gain or lose will be one electron volt. So K is 13.6 uh, electron volt. Okay, so let's draw an energy diagram for hydrogen in a gas. Of course, hydrogen Z equal to one, right? So if we put Z equal to one, and let's write down the energy here. So if, if the energy is, Z, is minus, is a sign of minus in the front, that means what? The maximum will be zero, energy will be zero, right? So we have a one here, energy is zero. Energy diagram, that means energy level, okay? Energy level. Right, so if we have zero here and then K here, so if N is equal to one, what happened? That means N is equal to one, that means the energy of this electron here, right? So can anybody tell me what's the answer of energy N equal to one? If you put the one here, E will be equal to what? minus 13.6 electron volt, am I right? So this is the lowest energy, which is the most stable orbit for electron, okay? So this is minus K, 13.6 electron volt. Are you with me so far? Good, good. Okay, so let's say N is equal to two, what happened? So if n is equal to two, that means what? That means quarter of k, right? Quarter of k. That means one fourth. No problem. Quarter of k. Oh, of course, you need to put a minus sign in the front. How about n equal to three? Of course, this is not to scale. This is, you know, not. This is not exact. I, I, you know, I cannot do it with you, like to, to the scale. Okay, n equal to two, what, what happened? That's one nice, right? One nice, one nice k. So you can have, again, the energy is what? Energy is quantized. It's the number of this times one or one fourth or one nice, one sixteenth, right? It's quantized energy. Okay, and then eventually you will reach to zero. And what are we called electron in the zero state? Free electron, because electron is not bound by atoms at all. It's not bound by nucleus at all. It will be free because there's no attraction between nucleus and electron. So we call this free electron. So here is 
n is equal to infinite it's very very far so you can draw many many lines here energy diagram here but it's quantized number is quantized okay so we call this ground state if electron here we call this ground state electron if if electron here excited state right because it's getting excited right you imagine the temperature get hotter and hotter you get unstable and unstable excited state and if energy reach to zero that means n is equal to infinite we call this electron free electron no problem right okay right so autumn has become ionized so this ion this autumn is charged i use this ion is ion this this autumn is become iron okay so let's write down this we know the electron here r1 is r energy radius is r r and energy is minus k and if n equal to 2 the radius is 4r and then the energy is what minus quarter k if energy is is r if n is 3 the radius is 9r and then the energy is minus k uh one nice k minus so if you as long as you remember the relationship between energy and the atomic weight ah oh, sorry atomic number or an integer number and also you remember this you can easily to write down energy radius and also the energy diagram so what i want you to remember is this equation of course you don't need to remember this you need to remember this and this number right so here we are we want to talk about energy transition of electron as you know that we know the energy here right we know the radius here so and this energy diagram so if i have electron in a ground state and i give energy to these electrons the, the energy the electron will pop up but if i give the energy with this certain amount this is what it's three three out of four right okay it's one uh, three three fourths energy and then the, the ener this uh, this electron will jump from here to here right so this is allowed transition if i get the energy more than this for example you've got i give energy more than this i'm sorry this 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 is not allowed okay this is not allowed if i don't give an uh, enough energy from one n one to n two the energy doesn't help for to kick up this electron from the ground state to the excited state okay so this is forbidden transition everything is quantized if you don't have enough energy you cannot jump from the step step one to step two right so um ionization energy we follow this equation and you want you need to know that energy is a proportion to what atomic number power two and it is a reciprocal proportion to the integer number power two okay so for the ionization energy what does that mean ionization energy ionization energy means that this electron will be far away from the autumn and we want to know what's the energy required to ionize this autumn and so this is called ionization energy so of course ionization energy we use ie for short it means what energy in the infinite minus energy at the ground state so this is called ionization energy for hydrogen okay so can you tell me what's the ionization energy for the hydrogen 
the hydrogen atom had to move one electron away from the atom, and you got cation of hydrogen, you got one electron. So can anybody tell me what's the energy required for analyze this? Yes? Okay, very good, thank you. So, you know this K, right? Minus K here, so you need, if you want to remove this, en this electron away from this atom, what you need is you have an energy which is K. K is 13.6 electron volt. Okay, this, so why, this is called ionization energy. Okay, if you don't have enough energy, then you cannot move this electron away from the atom. Okay, so the answer is 13.6 electron volt. Easy, right? Easy. And this is right. The beauty of the science is when you write down equation and you do the experiment and you find out the measurement of the from the experiment, the number is exactly the same as the number you calculate by hand. This is the beauty of science and engineering. Okay, and you will get excited with this because you got your answer right. You might get Nobel Prize. Okay, if you have a, you, you create a, you create a mathematic model and a mathematic model tell you that everything is predicted. If you don't believe it, you do experiment. You find out is the number you get from the experiment is exactly the same number as you get by the, the calculation according to the equation. Okay. Right, so this is periodic, peri this is the, the sum of the information in the periodical table. And one of the important information is this, ionization energy. Okay, so you know you can have different periodical table, okay, with different numbers. The one of important number is this. And we call this first ionization energy. What does that mean, first ionization energy? Because, for example, if we have three electrons in the atom, and want to move one electron away, we want to move two electrons away, and three. So what is, so we have first ionization, second ionization, and third ionization. The energy for these three electrons is called first ionization energy, second ionization energy, and third ionization energy for the, the case of the lithium. Okay, however, if we already move two electrons away from the lithium, so lithium cation, which has only one electron in the, in, in the orbit, so z equal to three, right? So if you put a number here, z equal to three, and then what can you get? So let's write down energy diagram for lithium two plus. Again, and this is the one. Annihilation energy will be lithium 2 plus become lithium 3 plus plus one electron. So we already have three electrons, and now we, are, we move two away already. And now we want to know what's the third ionization energy. Can you do that for me? According to Bohr atomic model, you can calculate the third ionization energy. What's that? Again, let's write down the, this is energy in the infinite, n equal to infinite, right? Which is zero, okay? So what is the energy in the ground state? Ground state will be easy, right? Ground state will be, because z equal to three, right? So e equal to k minus k, and then three will be here. Three power two will become nine. N will be what? Ground state n equal to one, right? So the energy, energy in the ground state is what? Minus nine k. Am I right? Are you with me so far? Good. Okay. So this is nine k in the very very bottom. Of course, this is not to scale. If we write down k is here, nine k will be very far down to the bottom, right? <laughs> down to the ground. Okay. But of course, I don't have you know, so this is not to scale. Let's write down here, minus 9k. So how about energy, n equal to two? Where, where, is, where is the energy level should be? Where is the energy level should be? 
if you put n two here, so it will nine divided by four. Am I right? Okay, so it will be n minus nine fourths. Okay, of course, again, this is not to scale. How about n equal to three? And equal to three will be what? One here, one here. Sorry, it will be nine here, nine here. That will be what? So n equal to three will be the same level as the hydrogen, which is minus k. So if I want to move energy from here to here, what's the energy required to analyze to ionize this atom? So I should shouldn't say atom to ionize this ion. Nine minus you need nine k, right? Okay, so it's nine times what? Thirteen point six electron volt. Okay, so why is compared to a hydrogen atom and the lithium atom, lithium ion? Why everything is the same? I want to move the electron from n one to infinite. The energy required is different according to different atoms, right? Why? Because the radius is closer. For example, this the, ion, the electron in the lithium lithium two plus in the n one is closer to the nucleus. So the energy required to move this electron away has to be more, right? Because this electron is closer. So the Interaction between nucleus and electron has to be is stronger, right? So, if the radius decrease, ionization energy increase, right? Okay, according to this equation, this is very easy. So, uh, I think you should understand, right? So, if we have, for example, this is lithium. Lithium has three electrons, and in the previous page we talk about the third ionization energy. Why? Because there are only, already two energy will be removed, already removed. So the first ionization energy, the definition of the first ionization energy is the minimum energy to remove an electron from the ground state uh, of uh, atoms in a gas phase. This is called minimum energy, uh, first ionization energy. Okay, for example, this year move Lithium atom move one electron away. This is called first ionization energy, which you can see always in the periodic table. Okay, and you can measure this easy. You can use instrument to measure this. And the li <coughs> so this is second ionization energy. I'm sure you understand the first ionization energy. The energy will be smaller than second ionization energy, right? How about the third one? This is called third ionization energy. Third ionization energy, according to Bohr atomic model, you can calculate. You don't need to do experiment. You can calculate the energy easily. Okay, so in uh, in general, for all atoms, first ionization energy can be measured, and then the last ionization energy can be calculated. Okay, and in this case, the third ionization energy will be larger than second ionization energy will be larger than the first ionization energy. Why? Because the third ionization energy, this one is closer, this electron is closer to nucleus. That means it's difficult to move out from the atom, right? Okay, so now let's talk about velocity, the third parameter which is the velocity of the electron. So now we know the electron, the distance, be, the distance away from the nucleus. And we also know the energy of this electron. And now we want to know the velocity of this electron. So according to the calculation, we find out this is the answer. Again, I don't want you to remember this number. And again, is the velocity is the function of atomic number and uh, integer number, or we call this principal quantum number. 
Okay, again, let's let's think of the most simplest example, which is n equal to one, z equal to one, and let's put this number into this equation, and we got the velocity, which is two point one eight times ten to six meter per second, which is about one percent the speed of the light. It's very fast but it's not fast enough to reach the light. So electron, the speed of electron is not quicker, or I shouldn't say that. Uh, the, the photon is the very fast, is the fastest in, in, the, in this universe, okay? The speed of the photon. But this is about 1%, not bad, very quick. 1% speed of the light, okay? So that means what? That means the electron here is very fast. Move very fast. However, slower. Why? Because N increase. So velocity decrease, right? Proportionally. So, and then this one is much slower than the N equal to two, the speed in the N equal to two. Okay, so this is V1. If we regard it as a V1, and how about N equal to two? Half V1, right? And N equal to three, what? One third, right? One third. Right? Okay, and then N equal to two, one fourth. Quarter of V1. Right, okay. So, so these these three numbers are all quantized because it's all relation related to integer number and the atomic number quantized. So I want you to remember is Bohr atomic radius zero point five three Armstrong, and the K is. 13.6 electron volt and the v1 is one percent speed of light that's it please remember this i ladies and gentlemen this page is very important okay not only in the kahoo but also it might be in your midterm exam so what you need to remember is r is proportion of n power two and is is reciprocal of is proportion to this reciprocal of z and this two power, this is z power two, this is n power two. I want you to remember this, okay? Then v is the proportion of z, but reciprocal of n proportionally. So before I suggest, strongly suggest you to take a look of this page before midterm exam, and take a look of this before kahoo. Okay. Bo is a great person, you know. You can find he's he's a hero in Denmark. You can find his sculpture, you can find his stamp, you can find his money. Okay. And this is the first this is the paper he published and he got Nobel Prize because of this uh, great achievement. You know this you know he he was with Einstein. Okay, so let me summarize the Bohr atomic model for you here. First, Bohr atomic model only deal with the simplest case, which is only one electron, regardless of the numbers of the proton in the nucleus, or elect or neutrons in the, in the nucleus. So only one electron. Okay, and according to energy balance, according to force zero equal to zero of the electron, according to the quantization of the angular momentum, you can you can use these three postulates to to get three number. The first number is radius, second number is energy, third number is velocity. So radius is a proportion to the n power two divided by n uh, divided by z. So z equal to one, that will be n zero, four a zero, 
9a0 and 6a0. And we understand A is what? 0 0.53 Armstrong, right? Okay, this number is beautiful. So energy is a proportion to the minus. You have to remember minus, okay? Z power 2 per N power 2. So if Z equal to 1, you can get 1 uh, minus K, quarter K, minus quarter K, and 1 ninth K. And K is what? K is 13.6 uh, electron volt, right? Okay, so we can write down like this. And you know that R, 4R, and 9R here. And velocity will be the proportion to the Z per N. If N equals, if Z equal to 1, that will be V1, half 1, one third uh, v1 half v1 one third v1 and the quarter v1 easy right and then we also learn the energy level diagram and then we also learn ionization energy okay Okay, so please read this by yourself. I don't, we run out of our time here. So, um, the following information I want to share with you is that because Bohr, he only used mathematic, mathematic model or mathematic equation to tell you what we can get. And we also got numbers. We, we know the radius, energy, and velocity is quantized. But you need to prove it, right? You need to do experiment to prove what you what Bohr say is right, so that you can get Nobel Prize. So the following information I want to share with you is how can we do experiment to realize Bohr is a great person? Okay. So now we want to talk about how to prove how to prove the Bohr atomic model is right. Uh, we, the story has to start from the light spectrum of atomic hydrogen because Bohr used the hydrogen as the principal model to, to, get, the, to, get, to, uh, get, to create this model, right? So uh, what we want to know is that is anything we can do, the, uh, do the, uh, to verify this equation is right. Okay, we start from three centuries, three centuries ago. You know, Newton's, he found that if he, if he, if he used a prison and then to let the sun, the beam of the sun, uh, light goes through this prism. And then he will find out that the spectrum of this solar light is continuous spectrum. So as you, as you can see, this is the visible. This is infrared, which is, you cannot see, but it, it's hot, right? And you know, ab above this vis visible light, you, you see the, uh, you know, the UV light. So this is a kind of continuous spectrum. That's what three centuries, four centuries ago, everybody knows that, stars know that this is a continuous spectrum from solar light. However, if you use hydrogen and you want to find out what the scientist is curious, they put the hydrogen into this chamber. We we call this gas we call this gas discharge tube. He put this hydrogen into this tube, and he, he apply a very strong voltage to make hydrogen gas become hydrogen atom. And then this atom. And then, you, since you ionize this electron, and then use high voltage, and the, the light comes out. Light comes out, and you go to the lens, you go to the, the uh, slit, and then you go to the prism here, and you, of course you focus the light, and you go to the prism. And you expect it to find, it's a continuous spectrum, like sound. 
But unfortunately, there are only four spectrum come out. It's not a continuous spectrum. It's a it's not a continuous spectrum. It's a kind of discrete spectrum, which you found that is red light, green light, blue light, and purple light. And you might get curious why we don't get continuous spectrum. Okay, this experiment is done by uh, Armstrong in 18th century. So in 19th century, he's a Sweden, Sweden scientist. He realized, wow, if I use this short, guess this short tube and I use prism, I got light spectrum of hydrogen, which is this. And at that time, we already know that this, the red line, the, the wavelength of this red line is six, 656 nanometer. And uh, for, the green, for the green line, is 486 nanometer. For the blue line, it's 434 nanometer. For the ultra, uh, violet line, it's 401, uh, 410 nanometer. If you're curious, if you, you think why, and then we might think, why if i put if, if i if i do 10 times experiment it's all the number all comes like this it doesn't come to six, 656 it doesn't go to 600 no it's always this four lines four spectrum so this wavelength they realize seems the hydrogen the wavelength is quantized it's quantized four wavelengths and this might be the fingerprint you know fingerprint, right? You have your fingerprint. So fingerprint can identify who you are, right? So this is like a fingerprint for hydrogen to realize what is this material. If you put an unknown material into this gas discharge tube and the spectrum come out like this, you will know that, wow, this is hydrogen because this is four spectrum. This spectrum with the four wavelengths is the fingerprint of the hydrogen. Am I right? Okay. Okay, and then they, they think of why the spectrum are not continuous. It's quantized. So they, they think of is there anything related to the hydrogen spectrum? Is that anything related to the hydrogen atomic model? So after Armstrong, uh, a few years later, J.J. Balmer, he think that, well, I have four number. This is four wavelengths. I have four numbers for the wavelengths. And it seems it's quantized because these six num these four numbers never change. So is it possible to write a, a equation which is lambda, the wavelength is a function of integer number? Is it possible? And he's very smart. He realized, yes, yes, I can by try and error. I don't know. I, I haven't seen his paper, but I guess it's try and error. So he found out that, wow, if I, if I write down something like this, R is a constant. If I write down something like this, this equation can represent this four number, start from n equal to three, four, five. If I have n equal to three, I put it here, I got this number. If I n equal to four, I put it here, I got this number. Is it wonderful if we have an equation to represent these four numbers? Okay, wow. And then he named this wave number. Wave, wave number is a reciprocal of the lambda. Okay? Lambda is wave, wave length, right? So he realized wave number is quantized as well as wave length. Okay, so now the question is, is it possible to link hydrogen spectrum to the hydrogen atomic model? Is this equation related to Bohr atomic model? And interesting thing is, the oh, wonderful thing is, yes, this, this equation can is talk about the same thing as atomic number, uh, atomic, atomic model. 
equations in the atomic model. Okay, so but before we get before we talk about this, uh, I have some information to share with you about physics of the gas discharge tube. You know, this is gas discharge tube. Actually, you have the gas discharge tube inside is almost empty. Only a little amount of the hydrogen inside. You can put hydrogen, you can be, you can put helium, you can put mercury, for example. Okay. And then if you put back, you have vacuum pump here, and then you put hydrogen inside. This is gas tube. That's why we say gas discharge tube, right? Okay, and then the pressure here is very low. Why? Because you do, you only allow a few amount of the molecules inside this tube, because you don't want to have interactions between atoms to atoms. That's important. And then you apply high voltage from cathode to the anode. Okay, so you have negative here, you have positive here. So under a very high vacuum condition and uh, high voltage, the electron will come out from cathode to the anode. You know, electron is negative charge. Negative charge from, from cathode and will hit the anode plate. So the beam of the electron will, will come from the cathode and then bombard to the anode. This is called, and this bin is called cathode rate. Have you heard cathode rate tube? CRT TV? CRT TV, have you heard about that? When I was young, we used that kind of TV. You cannot imagine, it's very heavy, small, and it's radiative, okay? Because of high voltage. Okay, so the energy of the electron is equal to what? If you want to think of energy here, the energy of the electron is what? It's kinetic energy plus potential energy, right? So do you have potential here? No, you don't. So you don't have kinetic energy, which is uh, 0 0.5 times uh, mass of the electron times velocity, power 2. Okay, so the free electron. And equal to what? equal to the voltage you apply times what? The charge of an electron. So this is the equation you want to find, you want to know. So for the one electron and one volt, so this one electron and one volt, we got what? That's what we call what? The unit of the energy called electron volt, right? Okay, so if I have one electron, which is the charge 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb. And then one volt, which times one volt, which is equal to what? This is the unit of energy, which is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 Joule. We, we define this as a one electron volt. You know, you don't want to remember this number, but this number is easy for you to remember, right? Okay. So um, let's take a look over the video. I oh, still have time. I want to show you the gas discharge tube. Gas discharge tube. It's easy. I, it's, now the technology here is.
Okay, uh, I think I will stop here. So if, it, if we are interested in this topic, you just go to YouTube and to type guest to chop tube, and you can see a lot of videos regarding to this. Okay. So, um, so here I want to tell you what happened, what's going on inside the guest to chop tube, uh, which is a matter energy interaction. The matter energy interaction is I have a, a bin of electron. We call cathode ray, right? Cathode ray. So cathode ray here will hit the hydrogen electron. Uh, sorry, hydrogen atom. And this is what we call matter energy interaction. So assume this is the the energy diagram of the hydrogen. And then we have electron will hit the hydrogen here. So we have this is atomic hydrogen in gas phase. And then we have an electron here, ground state, of course. And then we have an instant electron, which is this one. Electron beam, right? So you have tremendous kinetic energy, very heavy, very strong energy, kinetic energy. And this energy will hit the hydrogen. Okay, so this is instant particle. The instant particle not only can be electron, it also can be a proton. Num a proton. It also can be neutron number. A uh, neutron. It also can be alpha particle. Whatever, as long as you have an energy, instant particle with a tremendous energy. Why well, she doesn't tremendous energy? You have enough energy. Okay, so if the instant energy is smaller than ionization energy. Of course, there's nothing happen. The energy can don't come out. However, uh, this one doesn't become ionization ionization atom, right? Okay. However, if the instant energy the, is stronger than the energy between n one to n two, then what happen? This electron will be excited from ground state. For example, the length, the energy, the energy is like this. You will be excited. You will jump to the higher energy level, right? Okay. But so this energy, the electron will jump from here to here. Okay. But unfortunately, because of quant quantized energy level, so energy, this electron can only jump to here, not here, not here. And because of columbic force between this electron and the nucleus, uh, nucleus, we call this columbic attraction. This electron will be attracted by nucleus, so this electron will jump. And what happened? Because you gain the energy, and now you lose the energy, so you had to deliver some energy out. From this system, right? So, in the form of electromagnetic radiation, what or we call photon. So, some light, some 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 photon come out. So you can see color, right? If inside the visible range, in, in, uh, inside the visible wavelength, you see the color. And we understand. We follow. Einstein Planck equation is the energy of photon is equal to what? HV. So it's H times C divided by lambda. C is the speed of light. Lambda is the wavelength. Right? So this is the, the energy. So you understand this the level of this energy will be equal to this energy. Right? Okay, so however you still have some According to conservation of energy, you still have some energy here, right? So you, an instant particle will, will come out with slower electron. Slow. 
So according to energy conservation, this energy with this energy will become this energy. And we call this scattered particle. This is in instant particle, this scattered particle. Or in this case, it's instant electron and scattered electron. So for the instant electron, it's continuously variable. We tune this electron can be small and can be strong according to the, the volta uh, voltage of this gas in this gas to short tube. Okay, but as a result, the come out of the energy of the photon is discrete, it's quantized. You cannot explain why it's quantized at that moment, at that time. But we understand the, the wavelength come out is, is kind of a discrete. Okay? So it's kind of a set of the wavelengths. It can be 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 2. It's kind of a set of the wavelengths. So this is matter energy interaction. So this uh, explanation tells us that it can be, you know, this represents color. This represents color, okay, at this time. So it should be the characteristic of the target gas element. So as I told you that this is the, the energy level bit of the hydrogen from two to one. For lithium, this is different. Right? So all the atoms, all, all the elements has its own uh, energy level diagram. And the color come out, or the wavelengths come out will be the characteristic of the target element. I hope you still remember this. From n to one, this is, this is um, three, uh, three, four quarter, right? This is four quarter. Okay, for n2 to 1, this is much higher than this, right? So this is called energy level diagram of lithium and hydrogen is different. I just give you example. Different. So this is a characteristic, characteristic wavelength of this element. So this is the fingerprint of the element. Okay, so let me let me uh, quickly summarize this. The light spectrum on the and the characteristic X characteristic of the gas element is that the energy of the instant particles is variable. Okay, you can change the energy here, and then the energy of the immediate photon is discrete. So this is continuous, this is discrete. So the color here is discrete. But you can change the voltage between this gas in the gas to charge tube. No matter how you change, the color will be, remain the same. And we realize in the very, very few future, uh, very near future, they realize this is n this is n from three to two, we got red line. From N4 to 2, we got green line. From N from 5 to 2, we got blue light. 6 to 2, we got purple light. According to this number, according to this equation. For the gas discharge tube of the hydrogen. So energy of the emitted photon in this characteristic of the target gas element is like this. So at that time we have basic knowledge of the quantum mechanics stuff on this. So you know when you put a different gas into the gas discharge tube you got different color. For example this neon, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and hexon. You put a different gas into the gas to chop tube, you got different color. That's why in the old time, before the invention of LED, you go to pub to have a, a drink with your friend, you have fun with your friend in the pub. You see this kind of kind of decoration. And they are all made of the inner, inner gas. 
and you can see different colors. And this is the characteristic. And if we take this color out and we put in the prism and we see the spectrum, and we realize what is the gas inside this because of the spectrum. This is the fingerprint of the hydrogen. This is the fingerprint of the helium. This is the fingerprint of the lithium. Okay? Fingerprint of oxygen. So once you put oxygen into the gas discharge tube and you, you analyze the spectrum of this light, and you got this spectrum, you can identify, wow, the inside of this gas discharge tube, the gas inside of this discharge, gas discharge tube is oxygen. So it's like a fingerprint of the element. Okay, you have fingerprint of to identify your you, right? So, so identify our content of the star. When you have when you see the star, and you know star can emit the light. Or oh, I shouldn't say light because light is is very narrow. You can emit the photon. So you collect the photon, and you analyze the spectrum. And you can realize what kind of elements inside in that start. Okay, so you collect this and you see that you see the uh, what kind of things in the start. For example, like you can this last time I have a lot of mass mason, right? You might have a lot of nitrogen, for example. Right. Um, seems I I run out of our time. This is called cathode ray tube. I don't know. Do you know cathode ray tube? Have you seen cathode ray tube when you are a baby? <laughs> you even don't know why it's that, right? <laughs> okay. The cathode ray tube is uh, the TV in the old time when I was young, and we always had this TV. And this can also be a monitor. The cathode ray tube is that you have a bin of the electrons and come out like cathode ray tube, like gas discharge tube. And you emit the, the gas, you, emit, you change the direction and the speed of the electron beams, and these beams hit the phosphorus, the green phosphorus, the blue phosphorus, or red phosphorus. So you got the whole full color, or you got a full color picture in the screen. And this is the principle of the CRT, cathode ray tube, which is the more advanced from the cathode ray, uh, gas discharge tube. I'm sure, I'm sure now you don't use this, because it is huge, heavy, and it's, you know, nobody like it. And, you know, now you use the flap, it's called PFD, is a flat, uh, flat panel display. Flat panel display now is LCD, right? But I'm sure within 10 years, your LCD will be, become dinosaur. <laughs> you become LED, okay? So I want you to improve yourself. If you don't improve yourself, 10 years later, you become dinosaur. Okay, you'll be, you'll be history. Okay, so the technology improve very fast. I can become dinosaur, but you cannot. Okay, you are still young. Okay, so you had to absorb a lot of information, absorb a lot of energy, uh, knowledge, okay, to improve yourself. And this is flat panel. You, you see that the thickness of the, the, the size is, is not that heavy, but and is the, the flat, the panel is flat. It's not that thick, right? Okay, so I uh, I think I better stop here now. So um, uh, I hope you enjoy the lecture today, and uh, uh, I see you next week. Have a nice weekend.